You know, it's really been eye-opening to see that we don't have good treatments for obesity, even in 2023. And it, really, the paradigm of treating obesity has always been either to tell the patient, you know, just get off the couch, do diet and exercise, and try to lose the weight, or send them for the nuclear option, which is a bariatric surgery, which can be, you know, life-changing and has its risks. And unfortunately, to date, most of the drugs medically studied for obesity have not resulted in benefit. In fact, some of them have actually resulted in signals for harm. So in terms of medical options to treat obesity, we really haven't had much in our armamentarium. And we know that 40% of Americans are obese. We also know that obesity is the first domino when it comes to all the other health effects, including cancer, including heart disease, atrial fibrillation, sleep apnea, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, heart failure with preserved ejection fractions, so on and so forth. So I feel like if we can get that first domino from falling, which is what the management of obesity really looks like, we can prevent all the other dominoes from falling, maybe even help them to stand up again. So we need to do better with treating obesity. And that's why I'm so excited that we now do have drugs that can do that. So the SELECT trial looked at over 17,000 patients and they were randomized either to placebo or semaglutide. Now semaglutide, if you recall, is a GLP-1 receptor agonist, initially studied for diabetes, then it started hitting for sort of weight loss um, in, in obese patients. It, we showed that there was a benefit with losing weight. So this trial really asked the question, in obese patients with a history of cardiovascular disease, but with no prior diabetes, and that's the key here, that's what distinguishes this from the SUSTAIN trial, which was a GLP-1 trial in patients with prior diabetes. But these patients are non-diabetics, but they're obese with a BMI greater than or equal to 27. Is there major adverse cardiovascular events or MACE benefit in terms of giving this medication. And it looked over several years, up to five years of follow-up. And, and the top line results, which were published by the company not yet peer reviewed, suggest a 20% reduction in MACE. And the composite endpoint is cardiovascular death, MI, and stroke. And interestingly, it's all three components of the, of the composite endpoint that seem to have statistical significance according to the results reported from the company. So really very fascinating and a game changer because now you've got and a diabetes drug turned obesity drug that is now actually having medical benefit, MACE and outcomes benefit, which is unprecedented. And really the reason many people are calling this a landmark trial because it's changing the way that we think about obesity. You know, there were many things that really stood out to me. So the first was really the fact that even though this is not a not in, in patients without diabetes, you're having this MACE outcome benefit. So that I think is really dramatic because it's changed our paradigm now for thinking about obesity, not as a cosmetic problem, but as a medical problem. And really been a wake up call, not just to cardiologists, but I would say to internists, to primary care doctors, to endocrinologists, to really anyone who deals with obese patients to say, hey, just like we do with statin medications, we think about cholesterol, no matter what specialty we're in, maybe we ought to start thinking about obesity in the same way. So that I think is really fascinating. Outcomes benefit with an obesity drug uh, in cardiovascular disease and really hard outcomes that we're talking about. The second is the magnitude of benefit. So 20% MACE reduction is really incredible. And I think more than most experts expected from this type of a drug. And it really sort of begs the question of how treating obesity treats so many different things. It can reduce inflammation. It can reduce adverse metabolic parameters. It can obviously reduce your risk of hypertension, diabetes, sleep apnea. So, so you're almost going to the root cause by treating obesity rather than treating kind of the, the end organ manifestations of it, which is a disease itself. You're actually treating the root problem. So the magnitude of benefit of 20% is kind of on the scale of what we might see with statin therapy, for example. Now, of course, you wouldn't reach for this type of a medication, a GLP one receptor agonist before you reach for statins or any of the usual sort of mainstay therapies in patients with established heart disease. But as a second line in terms of prevention, I was really excited to see that magnitude of risk reduction play itself out.
The safety signals, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to a little bit more data on for sure, because as we start rolling this out on a bigger population level, we know that smaller safety signals can start to get amplified. The European Medicines Agency, which is the FDA in Europe, is looking at whether or not there's a signal for self-harm. There's been some concern raised, not just with semaglutide, but with some other GLP-1s and GLP-GIPs as well, about stomach paralysis or gastroparesis occurring as a result of using these medications. So I would want to collect ongoing safety data, but I really do think that these results are practice changing across the board. And if they get FDA approval later this fall to have a, a, an outcomes label, that would really change a lot of people's practice patterns. But, you know, I think before we start rolling it out on a large practice level with all of us prescribing it, there are a few things we need to work on. So the first is cost. The cost has been prohibitive for this agent in the past, costing about $1,350 a month before insurance. And a lot of insurances haven't covered this because it's an obesity medication. It's not a medical medication. But now that it has medical outcomes data, I do think that landscape is going to change and more insurance companies are going to be pushed to cover it. Uh, and I also think manufacturer is the other barrier we're going to have to overcome because we've already seen short supplies and such with such a high demand for this. Now with this type of data, the demand may go up even more. I do hope that the company can keep up with, with increased manufacturing as well so that we can get this to patients with heart disease uh, who would benefit from it after the label has changed.